Welcome to the Every Night is Game Night preview series, the show where designers and publishers share their passion and answer critical questions about their Kickstarter projects. If you're on the fence about a pledge, this is the show for you. In the TV series episode 34, Liberation, with John Simento and Jason Tagmeyer. Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to the Every Night is Game Night preview series. I'm your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for joining us. If you heard our episode last week, we talked about uh gen can't button shy contest we had a whole bunch of folks on the call talking about games that were entered into the contest and published eventually they won the contest and everything this was a game that was it entered into the contest a couple of uh, years ago and was picked up and published uh so we're very excited to bring it to you it is going to be live today as we drop the episode on kickstarter and near and dear to my heart just to like i, I think i mentioned it before on the regular episode the designer of the game is a personal friend of mine. We've been friends for over 10 years, so I'm so happy for him. So happy to uh, you know, get some time to give some pub for this game. The game is called Liberation. The designer is John Simintel. Welcome back to the show, John. Good to be here. All right. And sitting in, because he's not uh, dead from his Gen Con... <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Gen Con coma. He's like, so I asked him. It's like, are you? Do you want to? We're doing the one call. Do you want to stick around for the next one? He's like, maybe. I have to see how I feel after Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> but he made it. He's here. It is Jason Tagmeyer. Welcome back. Hello. I'm awake. If we hear a thud while you're on the call, we'll, we'll cover for you. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was just, I. You don't sleep there, and and when I came home, I I slept. So yeah, I feel good. I feel refreshed, and I'm I'm here. Especially if you're a game designer, like I, I went to my first con last year. I know we're totally off topic, but whatever. It's my podcast. Uh, <laughs> I I was hanging out with some like game publishers, and like it never ends for you guys. Like there's people pitching stuff, and it's like, oh, we're gonna take these five prototypes and hang out, or we're gonna, uh, you know, we don't get a chance to talk, so we're gonna do this, and you can't say no because this doesn't happen very often. And I'm like, all right, see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Going upstairs. Yeah, we had a, I, was, I was. I was. I was staying with a guy at Gen Con, and every time I went back to the room, I was like, oh, I'm going to take a nap or whatever. And he was there. Every time I went back to the room, he was there. And I'm like, what does he do that he's in the room for the entirety of Gen Con? <laughs> awesome. So neither John nor I were at Gen Con, so we're just sitting here jealous. And maybe we'll get to some other cons. Although you're headed to BGD Con, right, John? Yeah, hopefully. All right. Very cool. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the game Liberation. So Liberation is a two-player only, I believe, John? Yes. Yes, it is a two-player only back and forth kind of. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, why am I desi- why am I talking about the game? You are the designer of the game. Maybe give us the elevator pitch, and we can go from there. Uh, sure. So, Liberation is like you said, a two-player game. Uh, it's an asymmetric uh, card game, uh, like all of Button Shy's games. It's eighteen cards, um, and uh, I. I don't know if I should be saying this, but I've been saying this forever, which is basically I decided to design the game Star Wars Rebellion that came out from Fantasy Flight a few years ago, uh, but in 18 cards. Uh, I love the game Rebellion, but it takes four hours to play, and it takes a huge table to play it, and I just could never get it on a table that could even support its weight, let alone with the time to play it. So um, it's Star Wars Rebellion in 18 cards, plays in about 20 minutes. Um, It's very thinky. It's kind of, you know, it's a nice kind of back and forth, you know, game of cat and mouse between the uh, the good guys and the bad guys. But I'll let you decide which ones are which. <laughs> the, this is not necessarily the Rebels and the Imperials from Star Wars. <laughs> you have to get into a little bit, <laughs> bit of a different mindset there. Um, so uh, before we get into the actual implement, uh, the actual game itself and the Kickstarter, um, tell us a little bit about the history of the game. It's very uh, interesting because... <laughs> Uh, I remember you entered one of the wallet contests with this game. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, as you might have heard in the last episode of this very podcast, um, Button Shy does a contest every year uh, for 18-card wallet games. And it's uh, Jason says it's become a great way to uh, get games to be published by Button Shy. So I entered the contest last year, um, and it was chosen as the runner-up 
for the cards only uh, division. Uh, at that time, there was also uh, you know uh, submissions that included tokens. Um, and so I was really excited. Um, I definitely I spent a bunch of time uh, you know designing it. I took it to uh, I went to the game developers conference as part of my day job. Um, but I brought the game with me and showed it to a bunch of tabletop game designers there. Uh, they gave me great feedback, and uh, you know, apparently I was able to make the game even better so that when I submitted it to the contest, it was picked. Yeah, and it, and we're not talking like, you know, Ham and Egg is here. We're talking Eric Langs and also yeah. you know, some bigwig people. That's really cool. Yeah, Eric Lang gave me great feedback. Jonathan Ying, designer of Imperial Salt, gave me great feedback. Uh, it's really, really nice guys. Took a lot of time to uh, to help me out. Uh, Jason, how many of these the contest entries do you tend to publish? Is it a certain number, or you just publish whatever looks good? How does that work? Uh, usually, we the contests have gotten between I guess like fifty to a hundred entries each time, and we've published four to six from each of them. And they're not necessarily always the winners either. We had one that wasn't even a finalist that we published. Uh, one of the one of the testers told us, "I suggest you try this one," and we did. And it actually was published before any of the winners because it was just that that simple of a concept kind of put through our process. But yeah, we we I keep going back to them. I'm still going back to our 2016 contest, looking for little things that I might have missed or trends that are more popular now than they were then. And yeah, so that's that's like a, a treasure trove of designs for me. And the the barrier to entry is low. I mean, it is if you have an idea, and you know, hopefully between that episode and this one, you know, so all the other stuff, you know, the, the Gen Can stuff, and Jason has uh, the buttonshy dot com where he's keeping track. You, you can really get a sense for how easy it is to just jump in and give it a try. And you know, anybody can do it. I mean, you know, John had never published a game before, and there he is at GDC talking to Eric Lang and these big wigs. Uh, so you can really do this, and I think I find that really heartening. All right, so let's get talking about Liberation. Uh, but before we get talking about the actual game itself, it's important to note that even for 18 cards, even for these little games, we can build universes for them. Uh, we can have, you know, common theme, common art, all that kind of stuff. And it sounds like you've done that with, I believe it's called the Pocket Universe. That's correct. We started, uh, I believe the first game might have been Universal Rule, but we started this, This no, it was actually Pod X. We started this pocket this this pocket universe by looking at uh, AEG. They originally had the uh, I don't remember the name of the love letter universe, but they made all these different games in that love letter universe that shared art, shared a shared a setting, and shared some a lot of common themes. And it was great because for us, like art is expensive, and uh, coming up with something new every single month is it can be wearing and taxing on you. So we decided we were going to start sharing things. To kind of bring these games together and kind of um, uh, give this this setting that that nobody else has. So with Pod X, we started with just a couple characters on a ship, and the ship was going down. Uh, in Twin Stars, those two characters are also on that ship, as well as a whole bunch of other characters. In um, Universal Rule, there's all these planets, and each planet has certain things. And it's a lot of the home worlds of a lot of these characters. Some of that came in the expansions. And then come Liberation, we're starting to dive a little deeper in these planets and see the cities on them. So you'll see planets that you saw in Universal Rule that were home worlds of people you saw in Pod X and Twin Stars, and it all kind of kind of you know gels together. And you saw that pocket universe, right, John? You were just like, I got a game for that. Absolutely. I was excited to submit it to Bunchai because I thought they have a perfect setting for this. Um, they even have already released one game that's kind of a Star Wars-y uh, dexterity game uh, in the same universe, which has one of my favorite names of any game I've ever heard, which is That Snow Moon. Oh, I skipped that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why so is that your favorite was, name? That, that, the pun that just snow escaped moon, me. The pun, I lo- because That's No Moon, it's a space station. Uh, <sighs> <original story>. That's <laughs> No Moon. That. And that's actually... That was actually in the rules. It said, uh, if you ever, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it just said, that's no moon. It's a space station. I love it. Yeah, it was great. Mm. Um, All right. Uh, terrible puns aside. <laughs> 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 Let's get into talk about liberation. So liberation, you mentioned before, uh, there's two different sides and it's asymmetric, right? So maybe talk a little bit more about how you were able to pull off a genuine asymmetric experience with such a uh, small component count. Yeah, so the 
the main trick is uh, a concept that a lot of button-shy games use, which is multi-use cards. So um, the, the asymmetry comes in one side is the uh, dynasty, which rules the galaxy, uh, and the other side is the liberation, which is, you know, fighting for freedom. And so the dynasty, you know, you think about them like the Empire from Star Wars. They are huge. They take over planets. Uh, you know, they have big armies. And then you have the liberation, like the rebellion, which is small. You know, they have a hidden base that they're trying to keep secret. Um, and, and they, you know, their their footprint in the galaxy is not very large, but they're, you know, trying to survive long enough to uh, make their cause you know, successful. So um, in the game, you have uh, each, each city on the map is represented by a card, and then the map itself is represented by a, a couple of cards put together. And the cities are placed face up for the dynasty. Um, as they occupy cities, they'll put them in front of them face up. But the liberation only has their one secret card face down. And then when the cards from your hand or the face-up cards are used for their abilities, there's different abilities on the cards depending on which player uses them. So, you know, the the weaponry-themed card uh, has one type of ability if the Liberation plays it, and it has a different uh, ability, one of my favorite ones, to uh, deploy a super weapon if the Dynasty uses it. Um, and so that's the main way that it comes through. The you know the gameplay is different. The goals are different for each side, and then the cards are used in different ways. And you you managed to recreate that. You know, obviously, there's so much more going on in Rebellion, but they get you managed to recreate that feel of if you are the dynasty, you really kind of have to look at the whole board. Like you have to look at so you have you have these numbered or the letter planets, right? A through N, I think it is, and yeah. you really kind of have to look at geometrically like the entire thing and you know and like you know deduce where you are so like in in big rebellion uh i have you know i ended up cheating a lot in big where... rebellion <laughs> <laughs> this is small rebellion <laughs> that was big rebellion they're so they're like cousins right <laughs> they, they have a they have a oversized version of liberation that they released a couple of years ago <laughs> That's right. it's a big box version overproduced Just... re- liberation so <laughs> so um like in I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna keep with it, man. This is gonna be great. Uh, and, and so, a big rebellion, like, so you had to. Dedu- it's the same thing. Like, you have to deduce where the rebel planet is, but you can almost cheat it. Where, like, you can you have these cars that match up with the different planets. So you just kind of like, he's not there. He's not there. He's not there. Put all the cars on top of the planets, and then like, just look at it visually. Here, you, you really have to keep that stuff in your head. And, and that you were saying before, it makes for a thinky experience. That's what you're doing. Like that's a really like okay. I have to keep these letters and numbers and or letters especially in my head uh, while I'm deducing where they are. And then the re- the rebels I like what you did because like they have this action like you have your, the hidden planet, but pretty frequently in the game you can reshuffle and just change the planet where you are. And I, I find that like really frustrating and like, as the as the other player like, but it, but it's cool, you know. It, it kind of keeps you on your toes. Like okay, I. I I'm I'm narrowing it down, but I can't really tell where they are. It's it's a really cool little balance. Yeah, my favorite thing is the uh, the card ability that lets you move your uh, secret base to anywhere. Um, it's really risky, actually. It's sort of come. Uh, it's sort of picked up wholesale from you know the big box version of Liberation that I mentioned, um, where you have to say three locations. One of them has to be where your base is, and then a whole turn has to pass before you can move your base. So that's sort of where, you know, a little bit of the bluffing aspect comes in. It's a little bit of a risk because it's it's amazing to be able to move your base to a brand new location and, you know, all the, the kind of hunting that the that the dynasty has done, you know, it's not all wasted, but, you know, they've definitely lost a lot of time by doing that. Um, but if you don't name the three locations that, you know, are, if you don't choose well, then they might just say, oh, well, of the three, I know you're not in these two, so you must be in this one. So I'm going to attack that, and I win. Right, right. And I, the other thing I, I noticed about the playing, so like the liberation player is like you know sticking to move in, you know, always reshuffling his card, and you know, you know yeah. where am I, all kind of stuff. The the um, the other side, the dynasty player, I think it is. He been wanting <laughs> to say empire because this is not <laughs> we're not trying to do any uh, infringements here, um, <laughs> but hit like that play style is almost like. Like kind of like playing a piano 
in a sense where like you be, you build like a tableau and your tableau might have like three four cards like you occupy those cities or whatever mm-hmm. and then you twist them sideways in order to do the one thing then you untwist them in order to do another thing so like maybe not playing a piano but like operating a mechanism right yeah so like one person is sticking and moving and like you know playing like jabbing cards i could just imagine like no jab 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 and then the other player is like almost like turning gears <laughs> and, yeah. and, they, and it's just a completely different headspace so like when you're flipping the roles it just feels like a very different experience just, yeah, and just you know within the same game it is very different uh pretty much every time i've ever tested it with people they've immediately wanted to try again on the other side to see what the game would felt like because uh it's just so different i think my favorite thing about uh you know how the game feels different for the two sides is when you're the dynasty and you're occupying more and more cities you know you're you're playing more of these cards that stay out in front of you um you're taking those cards out of the deck and the sooner you go through the deck three times the sooner the liberation player wins that's their win condition is you know once they've gone through the deck three times so you know as the dynasty if you are you know take if you're uh, lowercase e empire you know is getting huge the game is going to go that much quicker as you start reshuffling and the deck is much smaller so there's definitely this cool balance of like i want to have all the locations and then i can you know uh exploit them all to drop a super weapon on you and do all these cool things versus i have to be careful because i'm going to stretch myself too thin and then the game is going to be over before it starts uh, in reference to the entire kind of line of button shy games, uh, Jason, where would this be in terms of like thinkiness and weight? I mean, I imagine that that you have eighteen card games that are kind of a breeze to play, and then like how heavy does it get? And is this kind of on the heavier end? So to, I would put this. I would compare it to all the two player games. That would be the first place I'd start because there's forty some games now, so it's crazy. Yeah, right? <laughs> but in the two player space, this is probably the most stressful. Um, and it's a good stress, uh, you know, it, being on either side of that, like little cat and mouse thing is, is, is stressful. Um, it's not the most complex, but it's one of the more complex. Uh, but it doesn't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's hard to get into. And, and once you've played it once, it's, it's definitely easy to play the second time, except for you're going to want to switch roles. Absolutely. Like John said, but, uh, yeah, I think it's definitely, um, the most stressful. That's where I would put it. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I mean, I think we've covered the game pretty good and all of the allusions to Big Rebellion, (laughs) which I think is completely hilarious. Uh, Anything else you guys want to share about the game? Um, Uh, So, so, sorry, I'm jumping in. Because you mentioned Big Rebellion, I will say that Liberation uh, Liberation is the second best game I played that day. I played all the contest winners. I picked it as my favorite. Um, Got outvoted, so it became second. But I played Rebellion later that night because I was right in that mood. <laughs> and uh, Rebellion was, you know, it was king, but this is right up there. I mean, it, I don't think it's mini Rebellion in, in I, it's, it's, it's got a lot going on on its own. And it's just, it's such a heady, heady game that, uh, that it really does stand on its own. But I, I did play them both in one day, which was a really fun experience. I, I love Rebellion, which is why I wanted to design this game. I think that uh, that is an under kind of underappreciated thing where it's like, you know, a game that evokes another game that's like this massive thing. Like we need 18 card Gloomhaven because I still have it up here. I've played Gloomhaven a bunch of times, but I've never played my copy. (laughs) So somebody offered to do it and I tried to get him to to do it. But it was uh, Paul Peterson who designed Smash Up and Guillotine Mm -hmm. and all these other things. He was like, yeah, I could do 18-card Gloomhaven and distill it down to just a three-card, uh, you know, your your round, your cards to your round and all. And I was like, yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and he was like, oh, I thought that was just a joke. And I'm like, no, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many games I just can't touch. No, I, I mean, seriously, uh, it is it's a very cool game. Uh, I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. Um, it's, it is a very cool game. It's very unique in the space uh, like that, you know, that above the table. Uh, we we're talking about in terms of these small card game, these small card games, like the more that you can kind of uh, make the players do the work as opposed to the cards. There's a lot of stuff on the cards, too, but it isn't overwhelming. Uh, I think it's really cool. And the, the, the project is live as we speak. It's only going to be on for what, 10 days, something like that. Jason? Yeah, about 10 days. Uh, there's a rationale behind that. Definitely. Uh, we're, we're not going to get into that fat extended middle 
that a lot of it's campaigns get into. It's not stressful. As opposed to the game being stressful, the Kickstarter campaign is not stressful <laughs> at 10 days. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you guys, uh, you know, uh, we've given you a lot of information. Make a determination whether you want to back or not. Uh, Jason and John, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right. That's going to do it for another episode of the Every Night is Game Night preview series. Once again, thank you so much for joining us, uh, for checking out Liberation, which, as we said, uh, is live on Kickstarter on the day that this program launches. Uh, We will have a link to the Kickstarter page in the show notes. I am completely and utterly biased (laughs) when it comes to this particular game. Uh, I think you guys have gotten the sense for how the preview series work. I mean, I take a little bit of a different tone. It's more about the sell, sell, sell. Um, I hope I ask some objective questions and give people a chance to really get into what a game plays like, feels like, on some sort of objective level to see if you will have fun. Um, On on this game, I'm completely incapable of that. (laughs) John is my friend, and it's a really cool game. I think it's a really cool game, so go ahead and go give that a look if you are so inclined. Uh, please reach out to us, uh, ENGN underscore podcast on the Twitter. We have a Facebook group. We get uh, just people trickling and joining every single day, which I'm really happy to see. Uh, you know, put up some threads in there so we can get some conversation going. Uh, we have a geek list. Go ahead and give us some thumbs and subscribe to that geek list so that you can keep up with all the episodes and all the different links where you can get different versions of the episode. Um, yeah, we are all over the place. Please reach out to us. Continue the conversation. Uh, please go rate us five stars or have many stars you think we deserve over on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. We would really appreciate that. All right, that's going to do it. This is Jason signing off. Later, everybody. <laughs>